So hi everybody. So welcome to my world. Welcome to the world behind No Place to Lie. I thought you might like to see the view that I fell in love with even before I saw the house. So this is my view. This is Hawksfold Lane East. This is the hill behind us that I come and see every day, which grounds me. I absolutely love this hill, the way it changes colour. In the winter, it goes really dark and green, dark green. And then at this time of year, now in the spring, we're starting to get the blush of the green leaves coming out there. So every day I come out here and I see this view. And Pippin and Bentley, um, well actually Bentley's not with me, so this is Pippin and Ziggy who are here now. So Pippin's the mum and Ziggy is her youngest son from her first litter. And Pippin's first litter of puppies, golden, co co golden show, show cocker puppies, is the subject of my next book, The Golden Litter. So that's what I'm focusing on the moment. But I thought you might like to see this view and come and see the field, which is the last chapter of the book, and maybe meet the horses if they'll come over. That'd be fun. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, so this is the field just here, which is in the last chapter of No Place to Lie. And these aren't the same horses. These are two to three year old polo ponies in the making. Um, beautiful girls. I don't know if they're gonna come over and say hi to us or not, but anyway, this time last year, in the summer we had some ex-race horses and uh, they're not my horses but they belong to somebody who lives locally and so there were five ex-race horses who were in here who for one reason or another hadn't made it as race horses that probably means that they're quite sensible because who on earth would want to go hurtling down those races i mean you know you're likely to die so anyway they're very sensible people but they horses rather then they came here and then when they first came, they would charge around all over the field. They were so unsettled. You know, most racehorse foals are even born with an ulcer in their stomach. So they're really very stressed horses. But they used to do this circle. They used to walk around in a circle. And we realised that actually the circle was more or less the same size as the paddock that they would have walked around before their races. So it's almost like these horses were walking out their trauma and they walked around one another. I don't know how, it was some phenomenon that happened. But as they walked, they seemed to settle. And over the days and the weeks that they were here, they really just chilled and got a lot happier. So that was a lovely thing to see because that's my house over there. Part of it, we live in the servants' quarters of a house that was created by a Victorian Gothic architect called Anthony Salvin and we've got this amazing view of the field and the horses. I just wanted to let you know what it's like out here. Okay so I'd like to introduce you to Pippin who features in the book. Um, she had a litter of golden co show cocker spaniels last year on the 1st of, uh, 1st of September and this is Ziggy, who's the youngest one, who currently is tucking into grass, which is very good of him, for him. Come on, hey, Ziggs. Um, so Ziggy is the youngest puppy. I hadn't meant to keep a puppy, but Ziggy was just so cute. A little bit silly. He looks a bit like an abominable snowman, I think. And he just looked at me all the time, all the time, from the moment he woke up in the morning to when he, when he went to sleep. So in the end, Ziggy stayed. So I'm writing a book now called The Golden Litter, which is about Pippin's litter. And we're thinking we might possibly let her have another litter at the end of this year. She's needed a bit of time off, but she was such a good mum. And I want the book to be about, you know, connection, connection between dog and human, how amazing these dogs are. They understand us so well. They make us feel less isolated. They give us that companionship we love. And also about our connection with the planet and nature. You know, we've kind of lost that, haven't we? When we're living away from nature, we don't know where milk comes from, cheese comes from, eggs come from, you know, our plants come from. The more we can connect 
with nature, the better. So that's what this book's also going to be about. And about walking. Because I've got to gear up for 2023 when I'm going to be right um, with Tim. Tim and I are going to be walking all the way from Land's End to John O'Groats to raise money for Zero Suicide Alliance and to raise awareness of the importance of talking. So we're looking forward to that. We're going to get a bit into, into practice and do a bit more walking before then. But I'm so happy that you were able to join us and see the view that I'm so blessed to have. I'm so incredibly grateful to live here uh, with my beautiful dogs and Tim and indeed the horses who are now just kind of, I think they want to be in the camera. Do you reckon? <laughs> Come on then, let's go. It's a good girl. It's a good girl. Whoop. It's a good girl. These are all girls. They've been hogged. This one's been hogged. So that means her mane's all been taken off. Well, they're such sweethearts, aren't you? Hey, hello. Hello. Thank you for coming over. Hello. Ziggy adores the horses as well, don't you, Ziggs? Be gentle. Oops, have you got caught? You got caught. <laughs> there we go, Ziggy. That's it. Good boy. Good girls. Good girls. Thank you. Very nice to see you. So thank you very much for watching and listening to Hello is Best to Talk. And I'm going to be doing some interviews with people who are really interested in communication, connection, our love of the planet. And I hope to be sharing those with you over the next few weeks. So thanks very much and bye bye from us on the South Downs. Come on then. Come on, Ziki. Come on then, girls. Woo! <laughs> Hello, good girl. I know.